Welcome to Coach's Corner. It is our weekly chat with the coaches of Poe High Athletics and the head coach of the Punk City Wildcat football team, Scott Harmon, is our guest on this edition of Coach's Corner. Uh, coach, thanks for being with us. No, thanks for having me, Sean. Well, the Wildcats, uh, what a season. It's been one of those seasons. And, and really, when you look at the issues other teams have had, some teams have had to just completely abandon their season or they've had to cancel so many games that it's just uh, it's just been a real mess. Really, when we put things in perspective, the Punk City Wildcats, we've really had it pretty good so far. It's challenging right now, but so far, you know, it, it's it's not been as bad as some other teams, right? You know, uh, I'll be real honest with you. I'm extremely proud of what we've been able to, to get done this year. I wasn't able to, sh uh, you know, really sure where it was going to go. But, you know, from our standpoint, we, we never forfeited a game. We had two games that were forfeited by other teams. So, you know, we were prepared to go each and every week. Uh, we were down some kids, too, and other kids stepped up just like this week when we're down. So, uh, we always ask our kids to adapt and kind of overcome, especially in these trying times. So uh, couldn't be more pleased with where we're at and uh, how our kids and, and my assistants have responded this year. One of the questions that uh, I've heard a few people ask is when a team does forefoot, does that technically count as a win for the Wildcats? <laughs> You know, it doesn't. Um, and that's unfortunate, you know, I, and I understand why there's lots of reasons that go into that. But, uh, you know, when you're in our where we're at in our program, we're fighting and scratching and, and trying to get over the hump, so to speak. You know, we were in the in the running for a playoff spot last year till week 10 uh, in the running this year till we kind of find out late after Bixby what was going to happen with Muskogee and and the other teams in there, and we still come in fifth. So we feel really good about where we're at, but it is trying. And uh, we feel like that, uh, you know, our program is in a position to compete regardless. So we're going to go do that and give our chance to get uh, kids to gain this playoff experience. Yeah, well, the playoffs start tomorrow. Before we get to that, the ups and downs and just how fluid this whole situation is and how things can change on a moment's notice. Muskogee, they had to cancel. And then at the last minute, a game came together and Katusa, that was it. We were going to play Katusa. And then it was just hours later uh, or hours before the game was to begin that they had to cancel last minute. That had to have been crushing, disappointing for your players because I know they're out there working hard in practice. They want the opportunity to compete. As a head coach, how difficult was that for you to deal with and, and to – inform your players that not happening that was tough you know that, that was real tough especially for the the seniors there we thought we had kind of you know got lucky for a change we hadn't had a whole lot of luck this year in terms of stuff like that happening for us but uh we felt like we had got lucky they contacted us so we felt really good about it but uh things just didn't work out for them so i'm a communicator we went in and you know, sit down and looked them in the eye and told them what we were going to get done. And, uh, you know, uh, each week basically has been fairly a fluent situation. So when we show up on Sundays, we try to shoot them straight and then let them know what we got going on this week. So uh, I'm a big schedule guy. We try to stay on schedule. Our, I feel like our kids do better when they're on that weekly schedule. So we've tried to stay as normal as we possibly could throughout the season. And uh, I felt like we've enjoyed uh, some success with that. Yeah. Playoffs, different structure this year, a different approach to the playoffs. Can you tell us how does this work? And uh, the Wildcats, by the way, headed to Dell City for the first round of the playoffs. Uh, that's happening. We're recording this on a Thursday. Uh, the Wildcats will be on the road tomorrow to take on Dell City in Dell City. Uh, this opt-in playoff uh, structure, how is it different from – a regular season's playoff structure. Well, yeah, in our in our classification, the top four in each district may make it. So, you know, this year with everything going on and people missing some games out, they feel like they was going to give everybody an opportunity to quote opt in or opt out. You know, sitting at a fifth seed, we felt really good about going into a, into the playoffs. You know, uh, wish we could have got that four seed in a home playoff game, but it didn't work out for us. Um, you know, uh, the 
the timing of this is not great, but we're still going to, you know, throw our name in the hat, fire a gun and see what happens. You know what I mean? We're going to go in into it without several bodies, but we still feel like the kids that we do have uh, deserve a shot to prepare and go play because they've been working hard all season. Yeah. Now, Dell City, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I don't remember Dell City being on the Punk City Wildcats schedule in any recent years that I know of. Um, how familiar are you and your coaching staff with Dell City? Uh, you know, Dell City kind of bounces around a little bit from large 5A to small 6A school. So we haven't played them in a while that I know. We haven't played them since I've been here. Uh, I am familiar with a couple of the coaches on the staff. Uh, pretty much everywhere we go anymore, as old as I am. Uh, but uh, they do a real good. I've got three really good defensive players that have signed Division One, uh, Division One scholarships, and, and plan to play at the next level. Uh, if I had to compare them to somebody that we play on a, on an annual basis, it would probably be uh, probably be Booker T. Washington. Uh, very athletic, uh, kind of from a suburban area or I say uh, inner city area, but really have really good facilities and, and do a good job with their football program. Yeah. How much time do you have to uh, for you and the coaches to pour over tape when uh, especially, uh, you know, for for Dell City, you knew the playoffs were coming. Uh, but uh, for instance, last week, when we thought we were going to have an opportunity to play Katusa, I mean, you you had what 24 hours to uh to prepare your team yeah. is, is that a is that a cramming situation where y'all are up until midnight or after you know with technology and the way we watch film anymore it's all on you know a, a huddled uh video program oh. and so kids can pull it up on their phone coaches can watch it at home i'm sure kathy my, my fiance is not real pleased about that because i'll be you know watching film late at night and um, you know, it is what it is. That's what, that's what coaches do. We study film, you know, we try to get every little advantage you can. So, uh, when we, when we found out we were playing Katusa, we hustled around and got some film. It didn't take us long. And, uh, so we were anxious to play that game. Our kids, you know, jumped on their phone. We told them, Hey, get on phone, watch a little film, uh, between now and then tomorrow night, uh, tomorrow night. And it just didn't work out for us, but we still yeah. prepared as if, if, as if we were going to play. Well, uh, obviously, the standouts on the defensive side of the ball for Dell City, they, like you said, some Division I uh, players that will be playing Division I football next year. Um, what about the offensive side? How does Dell City shape up? Uh, you know, they're very big up front. Uh, they, uh, they've kind of switched around, bounced around with a little bit of quarterbacks and running backs. They've got some kids that are playing both ways. So the film – of the most recent games, I feel like they've been better at quarterback. So I, th I think the quarterback switch that they made probably, I think it was game six or seven throughout the year or week six or seven, uh, they switched quarterbacks and went with another kid. And I felt like their offense has kind of hit a little stride after they've had him in for two or three games. So uh, we'll have our work cut out for us. Very athletic, very fast and very big. Very good. Well, the Punk City Wildcats are down currently 26 players uh, for close contact quarantining. That is a, a big, big number uh, from your football team, Coach Harmon. Um, some of the players that are that are getting experience that normally wouldn't get experience in their young high school football careers, uh, I'm sure you've, you've got a lot of examples of that. They're playing in varsity games and now headed to the playoffs uh, and getting some experience. How does that, how is that, how is that working out? You know, we we wish we were at full speed, you know, uh, and there's uh, and I hate it for the kids that aren't in here. It's really, you know, where my heart lies with those kids because they've worked all hard as anybody all year. And now they're not getting to enjoy this uh, playoff experience. But, you know, it's it, it is what it is. You know, you go in and look at these kids that have prepared hard, uh, you know, all year long and they finally get a chance to uh, experience some playoff style football it may not be you know in the fashion that we would have, have, have liked it but it's it's all going to help us you know come come next year and in the following seasons any playoff experience that we can gain is is going to be an advantage in my opinion yeah coach scott Harmon, the head coach of the punk city wildcat football team on this edition of coaches corner good luck in Dell city coach and thanks for being with us thanks sean we appreciate you